Woke up one morning and I was like, I think that, you know, everything that I was seeing, I think that having a, a protest march would be great to just show like the anger that everyone has and just express themselves in a way that's peaceful. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I am, I'm angry. Um, I, it's, it's frustrating seeing this every single year, every single, I mean, it's, it's gotten to the point where it's embarrassing. I mean, they're doing it right in front of the camera and it's, it's frustrating seeing that because they know they would get away with it and usually they do. I mean, it shouldn't take t dozens of dozens of protest marches and to basically get these people indicted. I mean, being a black man, like, I, I, I see this, I, I lived through it, so, like, it's, it's not really changing. Everyone wants to go back to normal, and normal is not good for us, for us black men and women. I think for me personally, um, my, you know, desire to join forces and get this done is kind of deep-rooted on a multitude of levels. Um, I'm a black woman in America, and I'm also the daughter of law enforcement. Um, so I had the privilege to grow up and seeing what a good cop looked like. I witnessed my father, you know, countlessly tell me stories about how he saved someone from killing themselves. He found children that were lost um, and made top cop year after year because of the service he did for his community. So I kind of would say I grew up in a very unique bubble. Um, as I grew up, I started to realize that my father was not every police officer in this country. And then the George Floyd one, most recently, is what actually broke me. Um, when, I, when I did see the first few minutes of that tape, I was frozen, I didn't know what to feel, and I knew that something needed to change. And I didn't know how to express myself at the time because um, I couldn't grapple with the fact that someone that I love also works for an organization, the police department, that has a rooted, storied history of persecuting people based on the color of their skin. At that moment of that awakening is when Andrew kind of reached out to me and it was kind of like divine intervention, perfect timing, and I was like, of course, like whatever we need to do together to get this done, let's get it done. I think that this country has seen so much change so rapidly that change to me now seems like a norm that we can achieve. I think more people, because of you know coronavirus has um, has resulted in unemployment, more people are at home, and the more people are watching what's going on. I think that work has been a distraction for so many people, and going up, waking up, going to your office nine to five, um, however you make your money, and for that to stop for so many people, it allows us to open our eyes to what's really happening in the world. What we're choosing to shut out, we don't have that option anymore. We can't shut it out. It's in our face every day. There's no, there's no escape. We have to deal with it. The and thing is with the millennial generation and Generation Z is that we have great ideas, we have great passion, but we have difficulties mobilizing those ideas and those passions to the voting booths. And I think that that's what is the first thing we need to do. We need to really get people voting and understand, and not just at the presidential level. Locally and state is super important to vote. Um, I think that's pretty much like the biggest thing that we need to start doing. It's the local elections that's stopping us from getting the statue and the monument removed. So I think voting locally and state is very important. Um, also, another agenda we, is to sign in a petitions mm -hmm. to get this monument, the Confederate monument, mm -hmm. removed because this the monument basically emulates hate and it, it memorializes this government that basically, you know, uses slavery as a tool to get their free labor and everything. So I think that needs to be removed. Another thing is basically spread awareness. I mean, Juneteenth is a special day and it's, a, it's one of the oldest holidays in American history. Um, and we want to spread awareness and basically come together because we are greater in numbers. The greater in numbers is, is what makes people uncomfortable and makes people realize that, hey, we need to, these, there's many people out there that want change and we have to represent them because that's what the governments are for. They're, re they're there for, to represent us. And if a majority is saying we need this to be removed and you're not removing it, guess what? We're gonna vote you out mm -hmm. because we need someone to represent us. The
the issue that we need to focus on is the fact that at the institutional level, things will not change unless we change the institutional level of what we're seeing. And that goes for multiple institutions. You know, our education system is like the first, you know, precursor to the, to the school to prison pipeline. Um, which is like such a huge problem. It's modern day, it's modern day slavery. You know, the, we talk about the 13th Amendment freeing the slaves, but that little asterisk below it is unless for a crime, like you're still enslaved by the state with the prison, prison industrial complex and the education system and so many, especially inner city schools, help facilitate that, that move into the prison industrial complex. Then you have, you know, from literally everything, from healthcare, you know, African American women giving birth um, are three to four times more likely to die during labor solely because they're not believed when they express that they're in pain to their doctors. Um, there's, there's so many different levels, like literally any institution that you look at, any bureau bureaucracy in, in itself is built on the backs of slavery and built on the backs of racism. So yes, we can, we can defund police, we can, you know, completely eradicate police, but unless we tackle these institutions and unless we, we break down the foundations that had built it up on the backs of our ancestors, it's going to continue. BAM literally started with 10 people, I believe 10 people, and we've grown to over 300 students. And it's like, we, we started so small, and that's, I think that should be a perfect example of what, you know, the hard work can look like. Mm -hmm. I mean, we built this gym. We built it's, it, we, it's, it's, it's paid for. You know what I mean? We have over 600 people signed up for this gym alone. So I think people can look at us, and I need, we need to, as a black community, we need to lift each other up. Invest and in our institutions. Invest in our institutions and just and thrive off each other in order to show people what we can do. All in all, we really hope that this event will not only just bring awareness to, unfortunately, all the people who've lost their lives to police brutality and racism, but also in continue to inspire this town in particular um, to continue to make change in their community. We also hope that this is a nice starting point um, to develop better relations with um, the police departments.